Today we're going to discover, and I'm sure many of you mothers already know, what the story is behind the aprons. How a mother's love that is rooted in prayer can have an effect that leaves a legacy from generations. So good morning and happy Mother's Day to you as we come together and worship. 
Would you stand as you're able as we sing of his Holy Spirit present with us?
continue in song. Pray that God will open our hearts to hear him, to feel him, to know his presence this morning. God in Jesus, who is our cornerstone, our everlasting hope and help and trouble. Sing with me. Lord God, we thank you for your presence here. We thank you that we have a place to come to where we can just let go and let you take care of what it is in our lives that needs to be uh, healed, that needs to be returned to joy, that needs to be found. God, we just pray that your presence here today will enlighten us and encourage us and most of all, strengthen us through Jesus Christ, who is our Savior. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.
Good morning, and welcome to Ortonville United Methodist Church, where we are leading people to be shaped by Jesus so they can share their faith and spread God's love. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. What a blessing it is for uh, us to be mothers, and uh, especially in this time of Gosh, it's been a struggle, hasn't it? Needless to say. So we are a community of faith, and you are welcome here. And we're here for all believers, all people are welcome. We invite you uh, to visit us online, and we welcome those who are worshiping with us online as well. If you're a guest, uh, we would like to take the opportunity for you to learn more about what we do here. We invite you to fill out the Connect card uh, if they should be available in the back or an usher can bring one to you, please fill that out and uh, leave it with us. Um, also, if you have a prayer request, you can do that online. There is a spot for that. Also, if you, uh, you can fill out a card as well and get it to one of the ushers. Um, we have a couple of announcements here. Uh, if you did not receive a flower, this is for all ladies uh, here today. If you did not receive a flower as you walked in, they are available in the back. You can take one as you leave. Uh, there will be no youth group tonight because it's Mother's Day. So all of you kids who would normally come to youth group, you need to spend some time with your moms. And maybe it wouldn't hurt her feelings if maybe you did the dishes or something after dinner tonight. That would be a nice thing to do. The fundraiser uh, for our youth mission trip continues. Uh, they would love to provide you with some yard work. Uh, so if your yard needs some tending to, you can contact Taylor Dietz, he's in the back there, or you can contact Pastor Brian and you can get into their schedule for some yard work. There is also, uh, donations are also appreciated if you don't need any yard work. Um, you can contact Pastor or Taylor uh, if you choose to do that. Wednesday morning, women's Bible study from 11.30 to 1.30. And also Wednesday, the, this is this coming Wednesday, Cookies with Jesus from 6 to 7. Those are for our young people. Um, also, uh, these past several months, um, we've had some uh, loved ones who have passed away from this church. Uh, there will be some celebration of life services happening uh, for Ginny Gentry. Um, she, her celebration of life service will be on Saturday, May 22nd at 11 o'clock here at the church. Visitation will be uh, 10 a.m. until the time of the service. Also for Ron Sutton, uh, Saturday, June 12th, will be at the Ortonville C Village Crossman Park, right kitty corner over here, from 2 to 4 also for Sid Barnwell. Plans are still coming together for that, but that is scheduled for Saturday, July 10th. So uh, if you would be so kind also as to keep those families in your prayers, uh, they will be dearly missed from our church family. Thank you, Jenny. Morning, church. Hi, moms and ladies. We honor you today, and uh, we're glad that you're here with us. Um, and, you know, I did offer to do the laundry. I usually do that every year once on Mother's Day, but because I know what the answer is going to be. No, thanks. Yeah, yeah, so... That's just to get me out of doing other things, right? So, uh, this morning we um, will uh, will um, have our children stay with us, but we have the nursery, and they're welcome to go and come as they they need to. But uh, we're glad you're with us today. Our basement remodel is almost done, Woo -hoo! and just some painting, yes, and uh, that has been come together. So, thank you to Don Bowen and all his hard work and making sure that. All the contractors do, are doing what they need to do. And uh, so get a chance after service, go down and take a look. So, And then also, we want to pay tribute uh, this morning to a few of our mothers, uh, at least uh, 
uh, three that I was able to get pictures of. And so, Taylor, if you would go to that slide, and you can just, you'll have to click on through those as you, however you decide. I couldn't put a timer on that. But um, we pay honor to uh, Betty Owen, uh, who's been a member of this church, as she reminds me every week that she does come a long time. <laughs> um, and she is 96 years old. I believe it's today. Today. Thank you. Yes. And uh, so some pictures of Betty for you to, to see and to notice. And then we have, I think it's Marilyn next. Marilyn Featherston. I, I shouldn't be saying their ages, but I did kind of ask permission. So um, but I believe she's 91 years old and young. <laughs> and talked to her this week, and um, she sounds wonderful. Uh, so we're just um, uh, happy to, uh, she has been a part of this congregation for many, many years. Used to play the organ uh, here. And... Um, just has blessed, I know, all of you in so many ways. So, uh, Marilyn, we appreciate you and love you as well. Marilyn Featherston. And then we have Louise Hutchins. Louise Hutchins. She is uh, aunt to Don, or to Sandy Bowen, and uh, she's a beautiful 98 years old. And um, has uh, actually, it's never too late to become a part of a church because last year, I believe it was around February, uh, no, somewhere around that time, December uh, 19, it's been that long already, she moved her membership uh, to this church uh, at her young age, and um, so we're blessed to have her part of this congregation as well. And I won't, um, uh, actually don't know her age, but it doesn't matter, but you know Donna Wethy, she's dear to all of us, uh, wasn't able to get some pictures, but uh, uh, Donna Wethy, uh, we love you and we honor you as well this morning as our mothers. So I'm going to pray. And um, Taylor, if you want to keep those pictures going while I'm praying, that's fine. And, and I don't think the Lord's going to condemn you if you pray with your eyes open. <laughs> if you want to look at them, uh, let's pray together. So. Holy God, you are the source of all that is good. We gather before you today seeking to know your grace and love, to feel your presence in our lives as we've come to worship, to be filled with the light of your light, of your love, and to know your generous spirit is with us. God, we are glad that you count us here among your children. And Lord, today we honor all mothers, women, ladies who in some way are leaving a legacy for generations to come as a parent, as a grandparent, as a mentor. We recognize, oh God, that Mother's Day is difficult for many, for those who have been separated by death from their mothers. We pray for them. Lord, for those who are yearning to be moms, God, we lift them to you you would fill their spirit with hope. We pray, Lord, for those who have strained relationships with mothers or have had just poor examples. God, we pray that you would send them to one such person who could show them the goodness of your love. We pray for all our ladies present today. God, we give you thanks for your compassionate grace toward all of us as men, women, fathers, brothers, sisters, husbands, wives, sons, and daughters. Forgive us for our failings and be gracious with us in your power and strengthen us for your service. We ask all of these things through Jesus Christ, who is our Savior, who lives and reigns within us and through the Holy Spirit who is with us now and forever. And through Jesus who prayed us to, taught us to pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I did forget to mention um, one that I was not able to get pictures for, but for Cynthia Barnwell, too, who has been a, a lifelong member of this congregation who just recently, as you, heard, as you know, lost her husband, Sid. And so, uh, Cynthia, we, or, um, Phyllis. yeah, Phyllis, thank you. Yep, Phyllis, I'm so used to talking to Cynthia on the phone. Her daughter, Phyllis, we pay honor to you and, uh, and uh, honor you as well. Thank you. Our scripture lesson today comes from the book of Ephesians. Chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious, unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to fully understand then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God, who is able, through his mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations, forever and ever, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. Well, there is no greater expression of human love than that of a mother for her children, at least in my eyes, and especially when that love is rooted in prayer. Today you're going to hear of such a mother who births 17 plus, not sure of the total amount, no one is, children of 10 who survived, who she raised in a rural village of Epperworth, England, in the early 1700s. Two of these children would go on to grow up and change the course of Christian history, history forever. When she was young, she promised that the Lord, that every hour she spent in entertainment, she would spend the same in prayer and a word with the Lord. Caring for home and raising so many kids made this commitment, as you can imagine, almost impossible to fulfill. So she had to get creative in finding time to herself, and her apron became her refuge. Susanna Ainsley Wesley, a mother whose love was deeply rooted in prayer. Meet Susanna Wesley, the mother of Methodism. Right now, she has her prayer apron over her head. Mother, 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 Amelia, this is my time of repose. It's my time of prayer. I have told you, when my apron is over my head, I am praying. That is not the time I can be bothered. Mother, 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 I'm hungry. 
Amelia, child, I will feed you when it's time to eat. Remember what I told you, this apron signifies my prayer time, my time alone with the Lord, and that is my priority right now. Go, I will feed you later. Sorry, Mother. Susanna Wesley was born on January 20th, 1669. She married Samuel Wesley on November 11th, 1688. Susanna and Samuel Wesley had 19 children, 10 of which survived into adulthood. Why is she considered the mother of Methodism? Because of her two sons, John and Charles, the founders of Methodism. Susanna experienced many hardships throughout her life. Her husband left her and the children for over a year because of a dispute. To her absent husband, Susanna Wesley wrote, I am a woman, but I am also the mistress of a large family. And though the superior charge of the souls contained in it lies upon you, yet in your long absence I cannot but look upon every soul you leave under my charge as a talent committed to me under a trust. I am not a man nor a minister, yet as a mother and a mistress I felt I ought to do more than I had yet done. I resolved to begin with my own children, in which I observe the following method. I take such a proportion of time as I can spare every night to discourse with each child apart. On Monday I talk with Molly, on Tuesday with Hetty, Wednesday with Nancy, Thursday with Jackie, Friday with Patty, Saturday with Charles. The children were raised strictly. They were taught to cry softly, to eat what was put before them, and not to raise their voices or play noisily. Physical punishment was used, but confession of faults could avoid it. All but one of their children learned to read from the age of five, including the girls. Susanna was extremely progressive for her times. It is because of her bravery and intelligence that we have the Methodist Church today. You know, after giving birth to 19 children, I think what Susanna Wesley was really doing under that apron was taking a little nap. I was blessed to have found that video and, and reach out to the church that used it or put it together and they uh, happily gave me permission to share it with you. I thought it was cute. You know, today we might find it strange uh, seeing a woman sitting in her chair with an apron over her head and and I'm sure that uh, children here might find it strange if their mother was doing that as well. But this was, as you heard, Susanna's daily routine. Now, married to, to Samuel Wesley was not an easy life at all, as a matter of fact. Uh, Samuel Wesley was um, appointed by the Church of, of England to um, be rector of the church right there in Epworth. And a few years ago, I have had the privilege to be able to go there to be uh, in the home of where John and Charles Wesley and the family were raised and in the church where um, uh, Samuel Wesley and then uh, later John Wesley would uh, preach. The area was really uh, tough for those who were following the Anglican faith, the Church of England, because there was an uprising at that time that was just beginning. And so people were not too fond of the king in this area. And so this made it hard for the Wesleys and uh, Samuel as well. He was not liked by his congregation. And in fact, their home burned down twice. And it was evidenced, or at least proposed, that it was somebody from the church that did it both times. <laughs> so we can imagine. Samuel Wesley was a poor caretaker of finances, even ended up in debtor's prison for a time. And he was often gone for long lengths of time. And so if anyone deserves motherhood or sainthood as much as Susanna as anyone, it would be Susanna Wesley. We are told that she worked in the gardens, she milked cows, she schooled the children, she managed the entire house. She was devoted to her walk with Christ, praying for her children and the knowledge in the word, no matter how hard life got. I love this phrase. A mother is a person who forgets to pray for herself because she's always busy praying for her children. Maybe you find that true, moms. We can only imagine the prayers behind the apron. We can imagine the prayers behind these aprons. 
We can imagine the prayers behind the aprons if you wear one today. I don't even know. Do you wear aprons today, ladies? <laughs> but we can imagine the stories behind your prayers. This past week, I had a few mothers share with me a couple of things, and I'll just give a couple brief synopsis of, of um, how they pray for their children. And one shared that um, when I know a child or grandchild needs help, I just talk to God. I do it quite often through the day. I just start saying, God, I know you're aware of what's going on in their life. I need you to just uh, fill in from there and take care of what their needs are. One says, my prayer, I pray daily for my children that they would each accept Jesus as their own personal Savior. I pray that God is always at the center of their marriages and that he watches over and protects them. I pray for my grandchildren. I love to hear grandchildren say, Jesus loves me. Another mother says, years ago a friend of mine shared she began praying for her children's spouses when they were very young. I think it makes a lot of sense. And we did that too. And now I, I pray for my children that they would know the Lord as well and have an act of faith. That they would know what it means to be a Christian, not just go to church. One mother says, I pray for my children every night, particularly the youngest. I pray for him to make it through college, to find a job, to hold his interest and enables him to pay his bills. I pray he finds someone to share his life with and makes him happy. He has. I pray most of all that God watches over both his wife and himself and guides them in the path chosen for them. We know a mother always uh, worries for their children, right? Is that just kind of natural? <laughs> kind of normal? And I'm sure as many faithful mothers here praying for your children as well in many ways. Love is the greatest gift. And when rooted in prayer, it can leave a legacy of faith that can have a life impact that goes beyond ourselves. While it may have been essential for Susanna in maintaining her sanity, why she prayed, she prayed to benefit her children knowing they were under the Lord's care. Prayer was also essential to, to the Apostle Paul in his ministry to the church of the Gentiles. That would be those who are outside the Jewish faith. The Apostle Paul is known for his ministry to the world, those beyond Jerusalem. And he had a desire that they would grow in the faith and that they would come to know the Lord better. And in his love for them, he prayed. In chapter 1, verse uh, 15 through 16, it says, Since I heard first of your strong faith in the Lord, Jesus, and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thinking, thanking God for you. I pray for you continuously. And just like a mother's prayers for her children, Paul's prayers and his message of, G of hope in Jesus would help strengthen these new believers in their faith. And they would go on to leave a legacy of faith that had stretched across the globe, a faith that still benefits us today as we can find as we look at all of the letters of Paul that is written that tell us of these churches and their faith. So today we're going to go through, just for a few minutes, we're looking at Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 through 21. And if you have your Bibles, I encourage you to open them. And um, if not, you'll be able to follow along as we go as well. We are going to learn that Paul prayed to keep them from getting discouraged. They lived in a city that was filled with pagan practices and false teachings about faith, even in the church. And Paul was wanting them to know hope in Jesus, that they too could approach God in confidence through prayer. Ephesians chapter 3, he says, When I think of all of this, all that's going on, all that is happening in your area of the world, with you trying to grow up a church as faithful believers, I fall to my knees and I pray. I fall to my knees and I pray. Prayer is a powerful tool, not just for mothers, but it's a, a tool for all believers. You may not put an apron over your head, but 
prayer should be the source of our love for people and for God, shouldn't it? Jesus modeled it for us throughout his life as he prayed often, as he prayed his, taught his disciples to pray. You know, for this mother, Susanna, there was no excuse for not praying. Susanna took her faith in God as seriously as she did her duties as a wife and a mother. It became her source of strength as it should be ours. So, not just mothers, but men, Christian brothers and sisters, do you fall on your knees and pray for a soul to save? That is the call of all believers to come together and to pray for those who are far from Christ or those who are faithful followers, our brothers and sisters, to strengthen them, those who are in need. And I know that this church does that well. There's a book, uh, article actually, I ran across when I was putting this message together. It's called Five Prayers Mothers Should Pray for Their Children by Stacy Pardo. And I'm going to include some of the outlines of, of her five prayers or methods, things that you can pray, not only for your children, but you can pray as a follower of Jesus for other believers in the faith. First in verse 16, it says, I pray that from this glorious unlimited resource, he will empower you with inner strength through the Spirit. Spirit. And so here we see that we can pray that God will grant them power in His Spirit. That's what Paul is doing in here. He's, he's praying that they will have an inner strength that is not of themselves, but that comes from the Holy Spirit. He is praying for their souls, for their inner conscience. Now I have a question. Where does the rebellion of a child begin? In their mind, right? Because as a child... They want. It's just natural. It's normal. And so we want. And even if mom says, no, you can't have that or don't do that, it's just natural to rebel. It starts within. Where did the rebellion of man or humanity first begin? Within. As Adam and Eve desired something that they couldn't have, they wanted. And it led them to be distant from God and so a place that the world would come to know until Christ's coming. Paul's prayer was strength from above so that they could face whatever they encountered. A strength that came from within through the Holy Spirit given to us through Jesus in the church. You ever send a kid to college for you parents who are a little bit older? Did you ever pray for them? Go off into the world. <laughs> pray hard, right? What did Susanna pray for her children for? She knew what they would face in the world, and she knew that she would not always be there for them. I bet she prayed for each and every one of their souls. Paul in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 says, Timothy, my dear son, be strong through grace that God gives you in Christ Jesus. Be strong through grace that God gives you in Christ Jesus. John Wesley was a smart individual. John Wesley, the son of Susanna Wesley, who became the founder of Methodism, was highly educated. Also an Anglican priest. But do you know what changed John Wesley's life? And do you know what led to the movement of the the Methodist Church and Christians across the world was John Wesley's encounter with the Holy Spirit on the streets of Aldersgate, in the street of Aldersgate in England. He heard the words of Martin Luther being read uh, from Romans 6, I believe it was, and John Wesley's was changed on the inside. He found an inner strength and life changed. If you follow his preachings or his sermons, you can, you can tell exactly where that change happened and how his sermons changed after that point. It empowered his faith, it empowered his preaching, and it empowered the church. And so we pray that those 
we love will know God in the Spirit and have that inner strength. Second, we pray that through Christ they would come to faith. I'm sure you pray that for your children, that they would come to a faith to know faith of their own. You know, hearing faith and having faith are two different things. And through Paul's letters, he is always teaching. He is always teaching the church. In baptism, as Methodists, we baptize children. And there are lots of reasons why we do that. But one thing about baptizing children is where does the responsibility of teaching lie? in the parents. And so when the parents are with their baptized child, they are making a confession of faith and a promise that they will raise that child up and teach them so that one day they will know a faith for their own and live by that faith. In Ephesians 3, verse 17, Paul writes, then Christ will make his home in your hearts when you begin to trust in him. Susanna's prayers were an extension of her teaching. She was very well educated, which is unusual for a woman of that day. In fact, it was frowned upon. Two hours a week, she had it mapped out. She would spend with every child teaching. And her teaching obviously had a profound impact on all of her children. Was it always easy? No. The story goes as while Samuel was away as often as he was, they um, sent a substitute minister in who brought the message to church, and she, as it is written, found these messages uninspiring and lacking in spiritual meat. And so she began to teach her children the Bible in her kitchen Sunday afternoons, and word circulated that she was doing this, and soon neighbors were asking if they could come And then people in the town began to hear, and before long, she had had over 200 people in her home. Don't know how, but wanting to hear her teaching. She, like Paul, were teaching young believers the way of following Christ, and their church grew. And the church grew the same way it does in the the book of Acts, by teaching, hearing the word, And thirdly, in verse 17, we hear that we can pray that they will be rooted and grounded in love. Pray that they will be rooted and grounded in love. And if you have your insert, there's little spots where you can fill those in. Also, I put the resources that I've used on here, so if you want to go for a further look at those, please do. You know, there is little doubt that Susanna's competence was not only in what she had grown to believe in, but her confidence was in God's word and its truth. A truth that she wanted her children to know. A truth that John Wesley, one of her sons, would go on to write about and wrote over, I think it's 6,500 hymns of God's truth. Many that are in our hymnal. In fact, the first one by John Wesley. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. Prayer leads to confidence in the truth. And the result in knowing this truth is shown in how we love and it's shown in how we, how we live our lives. A truth that Paul wanted these young believers to know that they needed deep roots to produce a great harvest. You know, Jesus talked about this idea of producing roots, right? When he tells the parable of the soils and the seed, they need fertile soil. Susanna in her prayers and her teaching created a place for seed to sprout and to produce so we can pray for someone so their faith will take root and it will go deep. And fourth, in verse 18, we can pray that they will know the extent of Christ's love. How wide, how long, how high, and how deep His love is. Prayer leads to God's revealing love. And when we sincerely grasp how much Christ loves us, it changes everything, doesn't it? About the way we view the world, about the way we treat others, about the way we perceive the the trials of life. God's love and a mother's love really go hand in hand. Praying so another child of God will know the depth of Christ's love 
is essential to the Christian journey. Hear me, church. Praying so that another child of God will know the depth of Christ's love. Praying specifically so that someone will grow deep in faith and know the extent of God's love. Because that's what transforms our life, isn't it? It's God's love in us. We know that love, it makes it easier to pray for others who need God's love. And who knows where that's going to lead? Who thinks that Susanna Wesley imagined that her children would grow up to be who they were? To transform the Christian, or make, be a part of the foundation of a Christian movement that would go across the world where millions of Christians today worship. And lastly, we can pray that they will be filled up with the fullness of God. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and the power that comes from God. You know, prayer can lead to a life of abundance. Now, I'm always careful. I, I, I'm probably more careful on the words that I say, and I don't always get them perfectly right. And I almost said prayer will lead to a life of abundance. But we have to be careful here because some preachers will stand up here or stand up somewhere, or you'll hear them on the radio, and they say, when you pray, God will give you the promotion at work that you need. I'm not sure any preacher can make that claim. But I do promise you that prayer will lead to a life of abundance. Abundance that is not of this world. You see, most of us crave satisfaction and fullness in our lives, don't we? We desire that naturally. And the problem is, is there are a lot of ways we can get that in this world. And maybe we've all fallen prey to that at some point in our lives. But we can pray that the fullness we seek, the fullness that those we love seek will be of God. And the promise then is of greater abundance, of a life filled. John 14, 27, Jesus told his disciples, as it recorded, I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and peace of heart. This peace I give you is a gift the world cannot give. When you pray, you can give a gift that the world cannot give. Because you can pray that someone will come to know the fullness of God and be filled with His Spirit and have that peace. Because if you've known God for a long time, if you've had a relationship with Jesus, you know what it's like to know that peace. When you open, I love this passage in Psalm 145, 16. It says, when you open your hand, opening your hand there means to open yourself. When you are open, when you are willing to give, when you open your hand or when you pray, what I put in there, you, God, satisfy the hungry and the thirst of every living thing. When you pray, you have the potential to help someone know the fullness of God. Susanna was devoted to her love for the Lord and her example of faith and religious reverence was influential beyond measure. We are a church here today because of the prayers of a mother who prayed behind an apron. So the question is, who can you pray for? Well, certainly you can pray for your children and here's five things you can pray for them every day. But additionally, you can pray for your brothers and sisters in Christ, for each other. You can pray for your friend who doesn't yet know Jesus. You can pray that they will find power through the Holy Spirit for someone who's in need, who is feeling weak. You can pray that they will come to faith for someone who is lost. You can pray that their roots will go deep and ground, be grounded in love for someone who is part of a church but maybe not doing much more besides worship. 
you can pray that they will grasp the depth and the fullness of God's love. Because that's what changes us, isn't it? We can't always do a lot of things about everything that's going on in the world around us, right? But there is one thing we can always do. There's one thing that a mother many years ago showed the world and that Paul, an apostle, taught a church that they could pray. Would you pray with me? God, we thank you for the spirit that you have given in us that fills us to full and everlasting joy. God, I pray for those who who need to know your love this day, to those who feel distant. I pray for those who want to go deeper and want to dig down and grow deep roots of faith. I pray for those who are lost and, or don't know you at all, God. pray that you open their hearts and minds. They will hear the words of your Lord and Savior who says, come to me. All who are weary, and I will give you rest. I pray for those who need to be filled and satisfied with the longing, not of this world, but filled with your great and everlasting love. We pray this, God, in your, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Savior. Amen. As we uh, um, share this song with you, invite our ushers to uh, come forward any time during that time. And, and the plates will be up here. You can get them uh, and then return them to here uh, when we're done as well, or any time. So.
God, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the gift of love that transcends beyond your heavens and into our very lives. We thank you for that gift of love that abounds not only in our mothers, in many mothers, but in all women who seek to love and to share their faith. We thank you for that love that is a part of all believers who have a responsibility to go and love in the world. God, we give you all the praise. We thank you for the gifts that have been given this day, and they would be used for your glory. In Jesus' name. Well, those words were kind of fitting for Mother's Day. Isn't that a beautiful song? <laughs> Not ours, by the way, but just a beautiful song. Would you stand with me as we close and sing together about our Redeemer who lives? <laughs>
Amen. Amen. That was the message of Paul to the church. Our Redeemer lives. And you may not pray under an apron, and you may not even be a mother, but you can pray. And I pray that you will pray for someone or many someones this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the banner.